Good evening. Thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. We start with breaking news tonight. Police arrested someone near Chief Gary Park after a quick standoff. We don't have a ton of details right now, but Spokane police say the standoff happened at a house near East Cinto and North Napa Street. Police say the man was holding a gun during the standoff, and they say they're not going to execute a search warrant at that home tonight. New tonight, Spokane Public Schools passed an emergency resolution to fix the roof at the Montessori School. Heavy snow and rapid melt earlier this month damaged the building. Now SPS thinks the repairs will cost $300,000. As Creme 2's Kyle Simchuk reports, board members also approved dozens of other projects in their annual capital plan. More than 20 schools across Spokane are identified in the district's 2023-2024 capital improvement plan. The list you're seeing here will cost approximately $6.1 million. HVAC system improvements at Rogers High School, playground improvements and upgrades for Wilson, Grant, Bryant and Abaddon schools. The district will also make sidewalk improvements at Garfield, Indian Trail, Jefferson and Westview. Ferris High School will see upgrades to theater rigging and lighting and the school's intercom system. Lewis and Clark High School will receive upgrades to theater audio visual systems as well as a new reader board. Roof repairs are listed for Chase Middle School. The district's administration building will also be remodeled in selected areas. Bond proceeds will be used to carry out the improvements over the next year. SPS says the capital plan is in the best interest of its students, taxpayers and the district. For a full list of schools and projects, look for this story on our website. In Spokane, Kyle Simcha, Krem 2 News. Well, Jackson State took on the Zags in the kennel tonight. Sports director Travis Green joins us live in studio with the highlights. What's up, Travis? Hey, Nicole. Gonzaga men's hoops has hit a bump in the road of late. A pair of losses out in Seattle as the Bulldogs have gone one and two over the past three games. But Graham E.K. and crew back in the kennel tonight, as you said, hosting Jackson State, and there's no place like home. Former NBA guard Mo Williams in the house. Williams took over as head coach of the Tigers in 2022. Tough one to watch for Mo from the opening tip. Nolan Hickman starting off the scoring barrage, a triple. He had 18 in this one. E.K. with a double-double tonight, leading all Zags with 22 points. Fellow big fella, Brayden Huff, Another solid game off the bench, 17 points from the redshirt freshman. You'd think this dunk here was going to be the highlight of the night. That was until Anton Watson decided to put down what might wind up being the dunk of the year in the second half. Watson finished with 10. The Bulldogs dominate tonight, 100-76. to Mark Few credits the big fellas attacking the rim for the turnaround. We've been after Graham to, to, to really start posting harder. It's what we do at Gonzaga, whether it's on the break or against zone or the end of a possession and uh, I think he got the message a, a little bit obviously and he got himself to the line tonight and then I, and Braden surely got the message he came in there and gave us another uh, uh, big lift. And sticking with the West Coast Conference we've known Washington State football's plan for the next two years is a scheduling agreement with the Mountain West but that's left every other sport in limbo however Today, all sports other than football and baseball appear to have a home for the next two years. CBS Sports' Matt Norlander is reporting that both Oregon State and Washington State are set to join the West Coast Conference. Unlike the football partnership, both universities will be members of the WCC, meaning they can compete for WCC championships and thus can earn an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. This agreement to join the WCC for now is only through the 2025-26 season as both Oregon State and Washington State hope to eventually rebuild the Pac-12. They are using that two-year grace period to give them time to figure out the future. Now, today's agreement does not include baseball. Reports are that both Oregon State and Washington State will be independent in baseball, meaning every game they schedule will be non-conference opponents and will need to receive an at-large bid to make the NCAA tournament. And with Washington State set to join the conference, that means we will finally be getting a WSU and Gonzaga men's basketball matchup for the first time since 2015. I know that's something our basketball fans will be thrilled to have take place. Nicole? Thank you, Travis. Taking a look overseas now, we know more about a major prisoner swap between the U.S. and Venezuela. Venezuela released 10 Americans today, a few who the U.S. said they were detaining illegally. In exchange, the U.S. gave Venezuela one of their president's closest allies. Officers here arrested Alex Saab three years ago on a U.S. warrant for money laundering. Biden is defending the move tonight. 
It's okay because we've freed American people who were held illegally, and we made a deal with Venezuela that they'll hold free elections. So far, they've maintained their requirements. People on both sides of the aisle did not approve of this swap, though. New Jersey Democratic Senator Menendez says the president shouldn't have negotiated the deal in secret. And Florida Republican Marco Rubio called the deal, quote, disgraceful. The Colorado Supreme Court issued a ruling to ban former President Donald Trump from the state's primary election ballot. They say what Trump did on January 6th disqualifies him from being president again. They did this with the Constitution's insurrection clause. This ruling is only for Colorado, and the state high court did pause its decision until January 4th. That's just one day before the deadline for Colorado Secretary of State to certify the candidates that would be on the state's primary ballot in March. Experts say this is an early step for courts to use what happened on January 6th to keep Trump off the ballot for the 2024 election. And that was Colorado state law ruling. And it may it may be something that is outside of the purview of the United States Supreme Court, which can only take up federal and constitutional issues. Trump is planning on appealing this decision. All right, let's switch gears, talk about weather with our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Legu. Jeremy, winter solstice eve. It is literally winter eve right now. Uh, I know we're talking about warmer temperatures during the day, but are we staying cooler overnight still? Uh, I think we actually get a little bit cooler overnight, especially as we get into the weekend. But right now, it's all about the mild temperatures and fog. 38 degrees, but look at the dew point here. 36, I always say those winds are calm and the temperatures and dew points are within a degree range of each other. You're looking at patchy fog and we've got it and it is dense. Much of Spokane County all the way out into the Columbia Basin and all the way down through the Palouse is dealing with a dense fog advisory that will last through 11 a.m. on Thursday and visibility has dropped over in Idaho all the way up into Sandpoint and across much of the region. Tomorrow gonna kind of be the foggiest day of the next few. We'll eventually see an overall shift in the weather pattern that brings about a little bit of a chance of rain and snow. For us here in Spokane, what starts out as a little bit of rain looks like it'll transition into snow as we get a little top down cooling. We'll have a closer look at that coming up in the full forecast, but what you need to know is that tomorrow winds up foggy and then mild through the rest of the week. Thank you, Jeremy. Now to Night Beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. The former Idaho State Trooper accused of murdering his wife two years ago is now out of jail after posting a one and a half million dollar bond. 57 year old Daniel Charles Howard turned himself into the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office in May. Back in February of 2021, Howard had said his wife, 48 year old Kendi Wilkins, shot herself. But detectives say they did not find evidence of a suicide, saying instead it actually looked more like a homicide. Howard has to wear an ankle monitor now while he waits for his trial, which is scheduled for March. A judge says prosecutors can ask for the death penalty for Chad Daybell, the man accused of murdering his ex-wife and his current wife's kids. Court documents say Daybell's attorneys asked the court to take the death penalty off the table because his wife, Lori Vallow, didn't have to face that punishment. They also argued about relative culpability, but the judge denied both of those motions. His trial is set to start in April in Ada County. And flags are at half staff in the city of Spokane tonight to honor former mayor Jack Garrity. He died earlier this month. Current Spokane mayor Nadine Woodward said the flags should be lowered. Garrity served as Spokane's mayor back in 1994 from 94 to 97. And in that time, he helped create the neighborhood council system. That was your night beat. To learn more about any of those stories, you can head over to our website, creme.com. And that was Crumpton News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. But